untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic games video. Today we're taking a look at a creature sacrifice combo deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon and this build has a few infinite combos throughout that we're going to try to assemble and that's also thanks to the help of Court of Calling, a recent addition through Explorer Anthology. Accent Triple Green for an instant also has Convoke so we can tap some of our untapped creatures to help pay for it including green creatures to help pay for the green cost and then search your library for any creature card with mana value X or less and put it straight onto the battlefield and the main combo we're going to try to assemble is Samwise alongside Cauldron Familiar and an infinite sacrifice outlet such as Woestrider or in this case Yawgmoth also works. So let's say we play turn 1 Familiar, can drain the opponent for 1 when it enters, can also sacrifice a food token to return Familiar from our graveyard to the battlefield. Then in turn 2 we can play Samwise, says whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, create a food token. Can also potentially sacrifice 3 food tokens to return a historic card from our graveyard to our hand. So so that includes our legendary creatures, which we have quite a few of in this deck. Then we can also play a turn 3 Woestrider, which will immediately make a food token thanks to Samwise. And then Woestrider can sacrifice another creature at any point to scry one. So we simply sacrifice Cauldron Familiar. And then thanks to the food token we created with Samwise, we can return Familiar to the battlefield, making the opponent lose one while gaining one life. Once again, make a food token with Samwise since the Familiar entered. And then sacrifice it to the Woestrider, rinse and repeat, and that's infinite damage and infinite life gain. Then we can also do the same with Yawgmoth, which can pay one life, sacrifice another creature to put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card. So if we replace Woestrider with Yawgmoth, we can always decline to put a minus one minus one counter somewhere if there's no targets, but if the opponent has a few creatures in play, we can now also decimate them with Yawgmoth's ability. And since the familiar also gains one life when it enters, it can help offset the one life we need to pay to Yawgmoth in order to sacrifice a creature, but we also get to draw a card in the process, so in the meantime we're also restocking our hand should something go wrong. So we've got 8 Sacrifice Outlets to combine with Samwise and Familiar, and the Familiar can already be in the graveyard, it doesn't even need to be on the battlefield for the combo to work, as long as we have a food token to return it to the battlefield. Then the author combo revolves around Yawgmoth and two copies of Young Wolf. This is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with Undying, so if it goes to the graveyard, instead return it to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, if it didn't already have a plus one plus one counter on it. So Young Wolf times 2 means we can now sacrifice a Young Wolf, bring it back as a 2-2, two, two, draw a card with Yawgmoth, and then at the same time we can put a minus one minus one counter on a young wolf that already had a plus one plus one counter on it, so it essentially resets its undying ability. So now we can essentially loop these two copies of young wolf back and forth while drawing cards. Of course we will eventually run out of life, since we need to pay one life for each iteration of this loop, but that's where a card like the Sadistic Pilgrim can come in handy, saying whenever another creature enters we gain one life, and whenever another creature we control dies each opponent loses one life. So now we can infinitely drain the opponent while infinitely gaining life and drawing as many cards as we want. So we are limited by our library size, but if we've drawn our entire deck we can assemble a different combo to try and win the game. And then we also have a one-off copy of Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons, another historic permanent we can potentially get back from the graveyard with Samwise, so that's also relevant. And says whenever we put a minus one minus one counter on a creature, create a one one green snake creature token with Death Touch. So now for going off with double Young Wolf and Yawgmoth with Hapatra in play, we also get to make an infinite army of one one Death Touching snake tokens, combine that with the Sadistic Pilgrim to gain more life, and we've got a nice combo going. And then the rest of our deck includes the mana acceleration, since we do need to cast some expensive spells. The Young Wolf can also help with the Convoke on Court of Calling, but we can also rely on Gilded Goose, which can also fix our colors. Also just a good combo alongside Samwise, making more food tokens that we can use on the Gilded Goose. And then the Goose itself can also pay 2 mana to make an extra food token if necessary. And the Delighted Halfling can make a colorless or 1 mana of any color that we can spend to cast a legendary spell, making it uncounterable in the process. So that's also quite relevant alongside Samwise, Hapatra, Pilgrim, and Yawgmoth, all potentially uncounterable thanks to the Halfling, and then it can also fix our colors if we need to make white mana for Samwise while still making black mana for Yawgmoth. And then of course we've got our familiar, and then the final piece of the puzzle, Orcish Bowmasters, just an individually powerful card, can deal 1 damage when it enters, and punish the opponent for drawing cards as we get to deal additional damage while growing an Orc Army token, which also helps us go wide to set up the Convoke on Court of Calling, and it's more sacrifice fodder for Woestrider to scry, or Yawgmoth to potentially start drawing a few extra cards. 
and then with Strider we can also potentially escape from the graveyard for 5 mana if we've got a full enough graveyard. So between the escape from Ghost Strider, Yawgmoth drawing extra cards, and Samwise potentially getting back some of our legendary cards from the graveyard, we can also play a longer grindy game against a removal heavy decks. And then a mana base can definitely be fine-tuned a bit more, but I've been relatively happy with it. We've got some fast lands here with the Thicket and our Blooming Marsh, since our deck tends to win pretty quickly, so don't need to worry about entering tapped too much. Then we've got a few peat lands, which can also be sacrificed to draw a card, while being a black-green untapped dual land, even if it costs us a bit of life. Four copies of Overgrown Tomb. Two copies of Temple Garden, Mana Confluence makes one mana of any color at the cost of one life, and then we've got the Deathcap Glade, which is better if we can play it later as an untapped black green land, and then we've got a Forest and a Swamp in case we need to search those up, and Boseju can also be a relevant interaction, can maybe blow up some Graveyard Hate card that the opponent might be main decking, so we can keep comboing, since our deck does usually rely on the Graveyard to combo off. So yeah, that's our deck in a nutshell, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and we can potentially win on turn 3 here. So definitely keeping. Turn 1 familiar, could also play Goose, and then with the extra food we can eventually play familiar. Could play Sam plus familiar, immediately replace the food token. Opponent's got a fatal push, so I'm glad to get that out of the way. Play Sam. And if they remove Sam, we can pivot into Yogmoth. It's gonna be a deadly dispute. Draw two, make two treasures. And I go for the throat. Alright. At least we got rid of some removal here. And there's a backup Sam, that's convenient. So play Sam, plus Familiar. And then next turn either Voice Strider or Yawgmoth can set up the infinite combo. Could have been a reason to just play Voice Strider and then wait on Sam plus Familiar. But now we're a bit better against Hand Disruption. Serrated Scorpion. More creatures they can sacrifice to draw. Another one, that's fine, get to untap. And uh, yeah, can go ahead and play Yogmoth. And then activate Yogmoth. Shrink down Scorpion. Bring back Familiar. Now you might be wondering what happens if Scorpion dies. We're gonna need something to put a minus one counter onto, but it is optional. So bring back familiar. Keep draining the opponents. And now it's just a matter of time. Doing it with uh, Voice Strider would have been a little faster, admittedly. But who doesn't like drawing cards? Okay, we're almost there. A couple more iterations of the loop. We're getting more efficient at it. And this should be the last one. Alright. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Halfling into Wostrider. Rider. 
And then Court of Calling to maybe find Sam. Opponent, what could be a blue-black ninja deck with Lurus. Yogmoth will be pretty nice too. Could play another Halfling to then next turn be able to play Yogmoth, which will also be uncounterable. Maybe that's better. And get in for one. Advantage of Woe Strider is that we start going wide with tokens to make it easier to cord. And there's the Ninjutsu. Hacker gets to draw. But Yogmoth is going to be pretty good at uh, mowing down all these cheap creatures. Ornithopter can also enable the next Ninjutsu. And there's Sam. I think we still get Yogmoth in play. And then I can sack a Halfling if I need to give minus one, minus one. If not, next turn, play Sam. And then we should have enough four card for Familiar and combo. So as long as they don't kill anything, we're fine, but the swamp there, or the pathway, could maybe enable Fatal Push. For Master, that's okay. So I could activate the Ogmoth right now. Although Fairy Seer is already an unblocked creature, so our opponent can Ninjutsu it here. So I think we gotta wait. And a Thousand Face Shadow, which gets a discount from Master, all these updated alchemy cards, so they can have it enter as a copy of Master. So now I'm forced to shrink down the hacker to keep Yogmoth alive, but so be it. Drew the familiar, so yeah, now we can just combo kill the opponent next turn regardless. I guess the hacker is a human, so I didn't even need to sacrifice Halfling, since Yogmoth has protection from humans. But uh, I guess it helped to draw into the familiar, so that's fine. Okay, play Sam, play familiar, and that's game. Can also mow down the opponent's creatures in the process, which is pretty satisfying. Haven't played land for turn yet. And our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and I see a turn three kill, so I'm keeping. Johnny's welcome, that's fine. So Halfling, next turn we can play Samwise and Familiar or another Halfling and then empty our hand. Another welcome. And a veteran. Okay. Play Sam. And I guess we'll play the Halfling here. So we don't expose Familiar to an Exile effect. There's Soul Warden. We will need to take that out, otherwise we're not going to win anytime soon. And a Voice of the Blessed. Okay, so we should have it here. Voice already a 6-6 flyer. I guess we can play Thicket as well if we'd like. Play Familiar, play Yogmoth. I 
My voice will grow a little bit. Alright, so now Soul Warden's gone. We'll have to go through the combo a few times. But we can kill the opponent's creatures in the process. And our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing same. But we've got a reasonable draw still, I think. With Bowmasters as interaction, good sack fodder for Yogmoth. Although we're also missing acceleration. So maybe this hand's not actually good enough. Okay, this one has Familiar, Strider, and Cord to get same. And the Bowmasters can help with uh, Convoke. Blooming Marsh was a good draw. So next turn we can try to kill the Lenor Elves if it doesn't get pumped. Warmaster, alright. And a Sentinel. This opponent's starting to go wide. Just gonna take out a Lenor Elves while we can. And then hope that the uh, Bowmasters can buy us some time. Turn 3 Strider, and then we still need an extra green source for Card of Calling to get same. There's Archdruid, so that's gonna set up a scary turn here. Just take 3. And there's our third green source, so now we should be able to court for the win next turn. have a couple creatures I don't mind chum blocking with either. And with another familiar in hand, it's fine if the first one dies. Although I guess it's unable to block here in uh, Historic. Another Warmaster. Into Collected Company. Four mana left, so I don't think our opponent will be able to kill us here. Unless they're running a bit of black for the uh, Shaman of the Pack, which they don't seem to be. Bowmaster triggers. Can deal one to the Archdruid, but I doubt we're gonna trigger it again. Another Archdruid, that's fine. And an attack for a little bit of damage. Can just take it all, and we should be fine. Okay, take our draw. Court of Calling, X equals 2. Get Samwise. Play Familiar. And there we go. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Halfling turn to Strider. And then... Can Court of Calling for maybe Sam. Opponent's blue-black. With a Stitcher Supplier, so maybe the South Mill deck. Okay, let's go ahead and play Strider. And then I'm not sure yet if we want to court for Sam if we don't have the Cauldron Familiar to go with it. Opponent's going to glimpse themselves for 10. Hitting Narcomoeba, Bloodgast, couple uh, flashback cards. So it could have been worse. No price amalgams yet. And if supplier attacks, I'll just take one. 
another chord. All right, that solves that problem. So we can now chord for same. And then we're a little short of chording for Colder and Familiar as well. But that's okay. Just play the Young Wolf. And then end of turn chord, untap chord again, and that should be game. Strider could attack. It's gonna save us a few clicks if our opponent doesn't concede to the combo. Blood gas is back. No haste just yet. Glimpse for 10. This time hitting Prize Amalgam, Creeping Chill, and other Narcomoeba. So nothing that's really gonna interfere with our plan. Take one. Hope the opponent taps out so we don't have to play around any instant speed interaction. Gaze will do it. And get same. And get our Cauldron Familiar. Could also get Yogmoth now that we have double Young Wolf, but this seems simple enough. Yeah, Court of Calling has been an amazing addition for this deck, giving you that much needed consistency to find your missing combo piece. And our opponent has seen enough, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is pretty decent. Can play Young Wolf into Sam, hopefully find a third land for Wostrider, and then Court for Cauldron Familiar, perhaps. Turn one, no discard spell. If they have removal for Sam, at least we have a backup. Probably wanted to play Blooming Marsh in case we draw another fast lane. Sam eats a fatal push. Alright, can play Strider and then next turn play Sam. This is a bit more mana efficient. And so if we play Sam, I should still have enough to court for Cauldron Familiar so we can set up the win. Trespasser, that's fine. Alright, we should have it here. A turn 4 combo through a Fatal Push. And can start draining. And our opponents decided that they've seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing potentially black mana if the Gilded Goose dies. But I think it's keepable. Can lead with Gilded Goose. Hope to play a turn to Wostrider. And then we're just missing Sam. Opponent red-black with turn one supplier. 
And it looks like another self mill deck, maybe Grixis. Okay, play Strider. And then I guess we're gonna be short on black mana for a while, but I think that's still okay. Could start scrying towards black mana. Could also make a food token with a Gilded Goose, as opposed to playing Halfling. The extra goat will still be useful if we draw a Court of Calling to help us convoke for two. Opponent does get back Bloodgast already. And we'll see if this uh, Grixis variant has more interaction than the Sultai one. Glimpse for ten. Couple more blood gas and double price amalgam creeping chill, so that was a very good glimpse. Although at least the price amalgams didn't see the blood gas go to the battlefield this turn, so they will not come back just yet. And if supplier attacks, I could chump and sacrifice to scry. I think I'll just take the one for now. And there's Court of Calling, perfect. So now I can cord for Sam, and then next turn, with a food token from Halfling, play Familiar, and that should be game. So yeah, let's just pass. Another Glimpse for 10. And they did find another Creeping Chill, or even two. So yeah, they've kind of hit the jackpot in terms of Glimpse early. They can get back some hasty blood ghasts, potentially. There's two in there as well. So it doesn't get much better than this for the opponent's deck. But we should still get them here. So that's gonna drain us down to eight. Triple blood ghast hits for six, so that's still a little bit short here. One creeping chill remaining. And now we can afford to block with a Goat token. Okay, so we can block Supplier. And then before damage we want a Court of Calling. get Sam. And then next turn Halfling into Familiar. Thanks to the Goose making the black mana. Could have sacrificed to go to the Strider, but did not really matter here. So got pretty lucky to find that Court of Calling when we did. Sam would have been another good top deck, of course. And there we have it. Got a long way to go, put us at 26. So we better start clicking. So I guess our opponent might be playing red for Croxa, which we haven't seen. Is there any other red cards here? Nope. So yeah, I think that's probably for Croxa. That can also be returned from the graveyard. We've officially surpassed the opponent's life total. And our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. It's not perfect, but uh, with double Young Wolf we can maybe court for Yogmoth. Opponent on maybe a red-white or blue-white artifact deck with Foundry already making a 4-4. I'm gonna play Halfling and then next turn I could play Sam. Death Camp Glade's a little awkward here. So our opponent's on the red-white builds and a portable hole will exile Halfling.
Okay, now we can play double Young Wolf. I think that beats playing Sam. Next turn, Sam into Young Wolf. Can definitely trump with one of them here. Which will buy us some time. And then we want to get Yogmoth most likely. Yotya declares war, can be pretty effective. We're gonna clear the 2 2 Young Wolf. At least they won't be able to take out Sam with it now. Okay, pass it back. And then one Young Wolf is fine to chum block if needed. As long as we have a Young Wolf without a plus one counter on it, we can still combo off with Yogmoth potentially. And then with Yogmoth, we can draw a ton of cards until we find Cauldron Familiar. So I'll chump one of them. And a hearse. Okay, hearse can stop us from winning with uh, any of our graveyard shenanigans, so that's definitely a problem. So Pilgrim can help us drain the opponent for a bunch, but there's still hearse to worry about. Do I still want a court for Yogmoth? I think I do. And then maybe wait for the opponent to use hearse. And then I can respond with Cord for Yogmoth. And then Yogmoth with Pilgrim in play would do it, but of course now we need to fight through another Hearse activation. So I guess we can draw a few cards. Make a ton of food in the process. we can do one more. Even if I find Court of Calling here, I wouldn't be able to cast it just yet. Their opponent can still turn the Thopter into a 4-4. So yeah, I think we pass now. They could also decide to keep the Thopter, but they're gonna upgrade it here. Alright, got a couple young wolves to chump with. A Reign of Truth. Okay, that can grow one of the 4-4s. Four We have not yet found a Cauldron Familiar. So I'm forced to chum both. And then I guess we can sacrifice to Yogmoth here if we'd like. And then I could just let damage happen. I'll stay at two life. 
could have gone to one and then sack a food to gain three to potentially keep going, but we'll see if they want to use the hearse here, if they do. So at least now the hearse is taken care of. That's a good thing. So now if we find Cauldron Familiar, we can combo kill. Although no cord or Cauldron Familiar in sight. So now what? We can play Pilgrim, Double Gilded Goose. And start draining the opponent a bit. Could also sacrifice Gilded Goose to draw, hope to find Familiar, and then we can still get there. But if we don't, it's a little awkward, since I would like Gilded Goose as a Trump blocker, potentially. So yeah, let's just pass a turn. Bonin makes a 1-1. One, one. Might have wanted to kill the 1-1 one, one in response by sacking to Yawgmoth. Can just jump instead. Opponent equips the 3-3. Three, three. Now a 4-3. Okay. So, time to line up some blocks. Block, block. Can sack, shrink down to 4-3 and take it out basically. And then we can finish off the uh, servo token here, basically, once it's no longer getting pumped by Reign of Truth. Got quite a few food tokens to spare, and there's Hapatra. That's another way to potentially combo. Take or draw. And another young wolf. Okay, so play Hapatra. So now if I use Yogmoth, what happens is we'll uh, end up making a token with Hapatra, which gains life with a Pilgrim. And that should be pretty much game. They could use the Hearse, don't really care, since we'll get a replacement Snake token here. And also goes to show how often our opponent has used the hearse when we could have had a cauldron familiar to still set up the infinite combo. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Now with Hapatra, we're just gonna take over the board. So yeah, even fighting through some graveyard hate, showing the resiliency of this combo deck, which is probably one of the best decks in the format right now. Helping you win through the one ring is also quite useful, since the Cauldron Familiar will just make the opponent lose life, it doesn't have to target them. So that's also a nice feature of this deck. So yeah, can't recommend this deck enough if you're looking for a competitive creature combo deck in the format. The mana base can potentially still be fine-tuned, but it's been working out okay so far. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.